Lord, we thank you so much for your grace. Uh, we thank you that we do not operate under law today and that we can rejoice in the riches of grace you provided for us through Christ. I thank you for the opportunity we have to minister together with the folks here this morning and all the, uh, the impact, uh, whether it be soul saved or saints edified that we have through the website and, and through talking to people throughout the week. I pray that your word will work effectually in us and that we would have the right words to say when people bring up spiritual matters. Amen. Okay. This morning, we are starting a new series, as I promised, on Romans 6 through 8. We're going to do a quick synopsis of those three chapters uh, that deal with our identification in Christ. Who we are in Christ is the title of today's lesson, a study in our changed identity. I thought it was a really great 10 o'clock this morning that we had with the questions that were raised and the conversation because it really uh, centered on the gospel, which really helped me for this morning's lesson because in order to teach Romans 6, 7, and 8, you must, you, you are required to have an understanding of the gospel, Romans 3, 4, and 5. And so I do not want to encourage this morning jumping right into the deep end. Um, this morning we went to Romans 9 even, and, uh, and, and that, is, that is deeper in Romans 6, 7, and 8 as far as doctrinal, dispensational doctrine goes. We need to understand the first things first. We need to understand Romans 1, 2, and 3, that uh, we're all sinners, Romans 3, 4, and 5, how we're saved by God's grace. And when we understand God's grace, it brings us to Romans 6, 7, and 8, which is who God has made you in Christ, your changed identity, which is a different way of operating than other places in the Bible describe operation by God's people under a covenant, under the law, okay? Operating according to your flesh instead of the spirit, Romans 8. Operating under law and not under grace, as we sang about just a few minutes ago. And so Romans 6, 7, and 8 provides an entirely new principle of operating based upon the revelation of the mystery that God, through Christ, gave to Paul uh, when he dispensed his grace to him as the apostle of the Gentiles to reveal to the world, okay? As we understand and operate in the church, the body of Christ, and as... Um, uh, scholars have said before, the doctrine for the church, the pattern for the church, is found in Paul's epistles. Of those epistles, primarily, the book of Romans is the one we should be handing out at our crusades. Uh, the book of Romans, okay, not the book of John. Romans describes salvation. Romans describes your identity. It describes what happened to Israel. It describes how you ought to walk in this present evil world, get, having God's grace as your message. Okay, so it's a very important to understand this book of Romans. So we're jumping into Romans 6, 7, and 8 because we want to study the second most important thing you could ever learn. The first one is salvation, right? Understanding God's grace, understanding that clearly. The second most important thing you can learn after you are saved is what Christ did for you, and, or, or excuse me, what, Christ, what God made you in Christ Jesus, okay? What God did for you is the gospel. What God did for you is that he sent his son to die on the cross for sinners, Romans 5, verse 8. And what he did for you is shed his blood as a propitiation through faith in it to save you. That's what he did for you. Uh, who he has made you is the second most important thing you can learn. Your identity has changed. Perhaps you've heard people say, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, right? Well, they may be right that they're saved by grace. That's what God did for them. But they are wrong that now that they're saved by grace, they're a sinner. Okay, this has to do with how they view themselves. Right? This has to do with your identity. And this affects so much in how we operate and how we think in this life after we are saved. How we think about our works. How do we think about our flesh? How do we think about the world around us? How do we respond to these things? How do we respond to sin? How do we interact with it? Right, well, Romans 6, 7, 8 describes it. It begins with changing your mind about how you think of yourself. Okay, I want to give a few different summaries of the first eight chapters of the book of Romans as they describe uh, this complete picture of what God did for you and who God has made you uh, from different perspectives. Then we'll go on to talk about Romans 6 today in detail. We'll do number, uh, chapter 7 next week and chapter 8 the following. In the book of Romans, if you haven't done a study of it yet, you need to do one. We covered it in 69 weeks, verse by verse, on our Tuesdays a couple years ago. Um, but you need to study the book of Romans. Read it multiple times. And of the whole book, the first eight chapters primarily, the first half, is what you need to know and dedicate to your understanding. Okay, because the first half of the book of Romans describes, again, the gospel and who you are. And you need to know those chapters, what they're talking about. And one way I've encouraged you all to study the Bible is instead of uh, getting down to the granular word for word, which is a good study as well, uh, do summaries of the scripture. What does Romans 1 talk about? The whole chapter, what's the main point? You know, I know there's questions about specific verses and why the words say the, the things that they do and how, why Paul said them that way. But what's the whole chapter mean? What's the point? What's chapter 2? What's chapter 3 talk about? What's chapter 6 talk about is what we're talking about today, 
right? Get the summary, the theme of the chapter, and it will guard you against making big mistakes. Oftentimes people get so much into the details of one verse or one phrase in a verse in a chapter, they forget the context of what Paul's point is, right? They forget in Romans 1 through 3, for example, the point of those first three chapters is that we're all sinners. And they'll look at Romans chapter 2, and in Romans chapter 2, Paul is dealing with uh, those that judge, or specifically the nation of Israel in Romans 2, explaining how that even Israel, the Jews, had no excuse and that there are sinners as well. But look at Romans 2, when Paul says that, uh, verse 13, not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law are justified. And so you can find in Romans 2 in Paul's epistles there where it's your works, apparently, that justify you, right? Well, you're missing the point of Romans 1, 2, and 3. Romans 1, 2, and 3 explain that we're all sinners and we cannot be justified by our works. That's the point. And then you can get into the details of why he said that in Romans 2, which is because he's explaining what Israel was being taught before. Romans 1, 2, and 3, the point is that we're all sinners. Romans 3, 4, and 5 explain how God saves us from our sins. Okay, and so we commit sins, actions, transgressions of God's law. We commit things that are unworthy of God's righteousness, things that are contrary to God and the way he operates. These are sins, sinful actions. 3, 4, 5 explains how we get forgiveness, how we get justification from our sins. And Romans 6, 7, and 8 describes how God saves us from sin, S-I-N. In case you don't know, we'll get into more detail in the next couple chapters, but there's a difference between sins, your actions, and sin, the nature from which your actions come. You see, it's not just a matter of, well, I've done a lot of wrongs, committed a lot of crimes in God's eyes, and God has removed the penalty from those crimes. He has removed, he has forgiven me of those crimes. And he has, Romans 3, 4, and 5. He's saved you from your sins, right? But what about your sin? What about the sin that is dwelling in you? The nature that you have of sin that is naturally contrary to God. What about that? And that's what Romans 6, 7, and 8 deals with. God can do things to solve the problem through Christ's blood of what you also did, but has God solved the problem of who you are? <laughs> you see, that's what Romans 6, 7, and 8 deals with. Yes, he has. He saved you from who you are and has made you someone else. All right, that's what you need to learn. You need to learn about that, and how he did that, and what it means. So there's that way of looking at Romans 1 through 8. Another way of looking at Romans 1 through 8 is, uh, is that Romans 3, 4, and 5 deal with your justification. That's a theological word, it's a biblical word, that simply means uh, declaring one righteous, or how God deems you right. Obviously, we learn in Romans 1, 2, and 3, none of us are right. None of us are righteous. So how in the world can God declare us right? Romans 3, 4, and 5, we're justified by faith, right? It's not our works, it's faith in what he did. It's imputed to us, Romans 4 says. We believe God that that he provided what was necessary to save us from sins, and he counts it for righteousness upon those that believe. He justifies you by faith. So Romans 3, 4, and 5 talk about justification. You're, you're being identified as righteous. But Romans 6, 7, and 8 deal with our sanctification. And this biblical word simply means your identity, who you are. Okay, I know a lot of people are confused by this word, which is why Romans 6, 7, and 8 is needed. I think in the church today, people don't understand them or don't teach them the way Paul explains it. And we need to understand sanctification. Because this is where people go awry. Because they'll think, oh, we're saved and justified by faith as the reformers fought for. Justification by faith alone. Right? But what about your sanctification? They'll say, oh, well, that's your life. Proving your salvation by your works. Right? Salvation is progressive through your life so that you've got to show yourself worthy even though you trusted salvation by grace through faith. You know, well, that's the Galatians problem, right? The Galatians thought that, we'll get to that in a moment. It's sanctification. People make this about your works. And we'll learn, as 1 Corinthians 1 verse 31 says, it's not about your works. God has sanctified you freely in Christ. Okay, that's what Romans 6, 7, 8 is going to deal with. So don't, going to deal with you and your thought about I need to purify myself I need to clean myself up I need to change my act well, Romans 6, 7, 8 is going to describe it's not that you change your act to be sanctified you're sanctified therefore you think differently about who you are you see and what you do and how you live that's what Romans 6, 7, 8 is about sanctification, your identity 